Carpenters Ministry presents this refreshing and life-changing teaching. We trust that this message will be a blessing to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's presence is so mighty in this service. Hallelujah. And his anointing is all over me. And it's all over me to do you good. Hallelujah. Amen. When a woman is in labor and she's fully dilated, she doesn't waste time. She goes straight to push. I'm fully dilated. I said I'm fully dilated. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. In about 25, 24 minutes, we'll be stepping into the best year of our lives. an awesome year I'm already speaking in the past tense 2015 was a glorious year God told us we were gonna take over and we took over and we're still taking over oh God made statements and he showed us that he's God in 2015 but 2015 is gonna pale into insignificance with what he has in store for us in 2016 you don't sound like you believe it glory be to God glory be to God Glory be to God. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 1. Don't attempt to write scriptures. Just listen, write what you can. John chapter 1, the Bible says in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. So in the beginning, the word was already there. So the word began the beginning. Therefore, the word has no beginning and the word has no end. Amen? If he was already present in the beginning, it means he existed before the beginning. And if he existed before the beginning and he is God, it means he had something to do with the beginning. So the word began the beginning and the word will be there even after the end. Amen? The word is all we need as believers. The word is all we need in TCC. The word is the dependable anchor for every believer. The word is the rock you can rely on, church. But why is it that for a lot of believers, the word is still an intangible concept? We know he's a person, but for many believers, there's something abstract about the word. You are in a word church, but when you hear the word, sometimes there's some abstractness. What, the word, what is really the word? God never intended for the word to be abstract. God never intended for the word to be, the, to be intangible. And that is why when you go through the scriptures, and we're going to do that in 20 minutes, you're going to see that God has always intended that his word be manifested. Because when his word is manifested then it's tangible. Glory be to God. Respond to me. Glory be to God. So the word was there. But the word is still abstract. How can something that we are meant to depend on and rely on for life, someone that is meant to be the anchor in our lives, still be an abstract phenomenon? That was never the plan of God. The plan of God was for his word to be manifested. What does it mean to manifest? To manifest means to make clear, obvious to the eye or to the mind. To display, to show. God intended that his word be made clear and obvious to the eye, to the mind, to display his word. That's from the dictionary, from the Greek. Manifest. It's the word fanero and it means to render apparent, to appear, to shine, to shine, to render apparent, to appear, to shine, to manifestly declare. 
Church, the word is not abstract. The word is a person. The word is real. The word is tangible. The word is all you need. The word is all you can really depend on. The word is all this church can rely on. The word is all you can rely on in your life. Glory be to God. And the word was never intended to be vague. I, I, I go to a word church. Okay, we, we, we make faith con confession at the end of service. Mm, mm -mm. God planned from time that his word be clear and obvious to the eye, to the mind, declared, displayed for all to see. And there are three main ways he's done this. Three main ways. He's manifested the word. Three main ways we see the manifestation of God's word. The first is, it was manifested in the word becoming flesh. The Bible says in John 1 verse 14, and the word became what? Say it after me. Flesh. Obvious to the eye, the mind. Tangible. John said, that which we have seen, touched, our hands have, our eyes have seen, our hands have handled. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. What was the purpose of this? It says we beheld his glory. <laughs> we beheld his glory. The timeless and eternal word that began the beginning, stepped into time, created time, and became flesh for one purpose, so that we could remove all vagueness and all abstractness from the word, and we, you and I, could behold the word manifested. Behold the word, Jesus. Behold the word. To behold means to look upon. Tell me, is there anything vague about that? Is there anything abstract about that? The word became flesh. And John says, we beheld his glory. To look upon, to view attentively. <laughs> to, to visit or meet with a person. And it gives... You know, the impression of when a very important person is met for the first time or looked upon with admiration. Amen? You know, when you go to a concert or something and there's a red carpet, and there's a red carpet, is that where they meet the important people? And then you've been hearing about this superstar and hearing about this actor and reading his name and suddenly they tell you for five minutes he's going to be meeting people. And suddenly this great man that you have been watching his movies, hearing about, he's now physically here and he's going to shake your hand and you're going to take your cell phone and take a picture with him. You're going to say, I beheld him. I was there. I met him in person. He just was no longer somebody I read about or I heard about. I met him. The word became flesh and we beheld his glory. Jesus who existed before the foundation of the world. Jesus, who was in the beginning with God, who began the beginning, plugged himself into the womb of a virgin and came to this earth. What was the purpose, church, that you and I may behold his glory? May behold his glory. May behold his power. May behold his abilities. May behold his character and his person. But that was just one form of the manifestation of the word. The second is when the word is manifested through the preaching and the speaking of the word. When the word is manifested through the preaching and the speaking of the word. The Bible says in Hebrews 1, and I'll just read verse 1, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past by the to the fathers by the prophets. So it means, church, what are we talking about? We're talking about the word not being vague, true? 
We're talking about the word not being abstract, correct? We're talking about God always having had the plan that his word be manifested. We're looking at three ways that God has done this through time. We said, first of all, the word became flesh. But now we're saying the second way is when the word is manifested by the speaking and the preaching of the word. And church, this began even before the word became flesh. Because it says in time past, the prophets of old spoke. They spoke for the word. And each time they spoke for the word, what was God trying to do? He was trying to make people see clearly to their eyes and to their minds this word that had been with him before the foundation of the world. Think about Balaam. Isaiah, Elijah, Elisha. These are all prophets through whom the word was made manifest. Balaam tried to speak anything else, but God says, no, it's only the word. It's only the word that I put in your mouth that you will speak. When you get home, read Numbers 22 to 24. Read those three chapters. The angel of the Lord said to him, only the word that I speak to you shall you speak. You see, if you speak an adulterated word, you will not have the manifestation God wants. If you speak a diluted word, you will not have the manifestation that God has desired from the beginning. That is why it is the word that became flesh. In all of his fullness, we beheld his glory. And in time past, God spoke through the prophets. And what did they speak? They spoke forth the word. And Balaam even further went on to say, listen, I could not go beyond the word of the Lord to do good or bad of my own will what the Lord says that I must speak. And that is what Israel experienced. What the Lord says that I must speak. But listen to something else Balaam said. Follow me carefully. So, I'm reading Numbers 24, but I don't want you to turn. That's why I'm not telling you. So he took up his oracle and he said, the utterance of Balaam, the son of Beor, and the utterance of the man whose eyes are open, and goes on to verse 17. I see him. Who did he see? Who? The word, Jesus. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel and batter the brow of Moab and destroy all the sons of tumult. So the word was being made manifest, but Balaam had limitations. He was Old Testament. But then a time came. I said the time came when Hebrews goes on to tell us that in these last days God has spoken to us by his son and it's not like I behold him and it's far I see him not now mm -mm. the word became flesh we beheld his glory but it wasn't just by his son Titus went on to say that in due time God has manifested his word through preaching. So when you preach the word, when you speak the word, the word is made clear and the word is made manifest. But let me tell you the third one. Ooh. Somebody say, ooh. Let me tell you the third one. The word became flesh. We speak and preach the word is manifested. Oh, but there's another form of the manifestation of the word of God that God wants us to know about this night. And that is when the word is manifested in signs and wonders and miracles. Glory be to God! When the word is manifested in signs and wonders and miracles some christians get uncomfortable when you talk about signs and wonders and miracles because of the abuse if i see a 2000 naira note and somebody tells me it's a counterfeit i won't even think twice do you know why there's no original 2000 naira note 
But if I see a 1,000 naira note and someone tells me it's a counterfeit, is it a possibility? Yes, because there is an original 1,000 naira note. For too long, the church has become uncomfortable around signs and wonders and miracles because of the counterfeit. But the counterfeit is only there because there is an original. And the original is in the plan of God for these last days. That his word may be made clear and obvious, clear to the eye and to the mind. Impossibilities becoming possible. Dry bones living again like prayer sand. The lame walking. The blind seeing. The poor becoming great financiers of the kingdom. The prostitute becoming a pastor. Signs and wonders and miracles are a form of the manifestation of the word of God. Acts chapter 2 and verse 22 says, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles. That's the word dunamis, wonders. That's the word terrors and signs. That's the word Simeon, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know. We're stepping into a year of signs, wonders, and miracles. We're stepping into a year where the word will be manifested in a way that will be clear for all to see. We're stepping into a, a year where the impossible will be possible as a way of life. We're stepping into your year where the supernatural grace prayer sang about will be a daily experience for us. And we're going to find out why. Dunamis, Terras, Simeon, a manifestation of the word that existed before the beginning. Proved, tried, and tested. Hebrews 2.4 God also bearing witness both with signs. Say with me, signs. Simeon, and wonders, say with me wonders, terrors, and various miracles, say with me dunamis, and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Signs and wonders, church, are a fruit, are a manifestation of the word of God at work in your life. People who don't have the word run after signs and wonders and miracles. We don't run after those. We run after the word. But the word is not a dormant, vague, impotent phenomenon. The word is active, alive, living, and powerful. The word was intended to be made manifest. The word was intended to be made clear to the eye and to the mind. The word was intended to be tangible and measurable. The word was intended to be seen and experienced. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I said glory be to God. When you go after the word and the word is at work in you and the word is all you need and the word is all you rely on and you're courageous enough. Hear my words. You're courageous enough because it takes courage to depend on only the word. You're courageous enough to cut off all other anchors. You say, no, it's only by the word. It's only by the word I will live. And when I live by the word, there will be manifestations. Amen? There will be, there will be manifestations of the word. Paul said in Romans 15, 9, just listen, mighty signs, again, Simeon, wonders, terrors, by the power, dunamis, of the Spirit of God. Listen, listen, listen. So that from Jerusalem and round about to Illyricum, I have done what? Fully preached the gospel of Christ. 
So you haven't fully preached the gospel of Christ. You haven't fully experienced the word of God if these manifestations are not your experience. Did you see it in the Bible? He says, I have fully preached it in Simeon, in Terras, and in Dunamis. In a display of the power of God in my life. In a display of signs. What are signs? Signs are things that point you to somewhere. Signs are things that are tests of the presence of God in your life. Church, we're stepping into a year where there will be signs that will attest of the God that you serve. Some of those signs are what your relatives are waiting for to get born again. Church, listen to me. The manifestation of the word of God is part of the end time plan of God. It is one of the greatest tools of winning souls to Christ in these last days. Because when people see that the same circumstance hits them and the same circumstance hits you and you come out with victory, they're going to want to ask you what you know. But if the same circumstance hits the unbeliever, and the same circumstance hits you and you're all one ten and ten pence. Don't tell me it's the word. Don't tell me. Church, we are going to be a courageous people. We're going to rise up in 2016 and take the manifestations of the word of God and believe for them and receive them and experience them. Signs, they point to you. Wonders are things that make people look in amazement make people say things like i don't know who this guy is but that a notable miracle was performed by him we cannot deny it i'm talking about notable miracles in your life that even the greatest skeptic and atheist will not deny notable miracles that even the greatest doctor will go i don't know but we cannot deny it we cannot deny it. The facts are there. This is how you were before. But this is how you are after. No. Not going after signs and wonders. Going after the word. And the word will produce those signs and wonders. Glory be to God. We should stop relating with the word. Like the word is impotent. Or the word is a crutch we just lean on. And call ourselves believers. No. God wants us to step into a year. Where the word will be manifest from January. Manifest in February. Manifest in March. Manifest all the way to the end of the year. Clear. And obvious. To the eye. And to the mind. And for all to see. Fruit. Evidence. If the word has been at work in you. I said to you when I came up that I felt like a pregnant woman that had to put to bed. When a pregnant woman wants to put to bed and she manifests her baby, that baby just become, becomes evidence of something that happened nine months earlier. And apart from Mary, no woman who has a baby can come, can come and tell you I'm a virgin. That baby is proof that conception took place Incubation has gone on, growth has happened, poof, and a day of manifestation has arrived. Church, we are stepping into our season of manifestation. Hey! Manifestations that will reveal deep things. Manifestations that will show years of a deep walk with God. Incubation, conception has been going on in your womb. It is time to give birth. Yeah. Yeah. Kala, 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 yeah. Boo, 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 yeah. And it's not about you. It is part of God's strategy for the last days. When a woman who is 45 gives birth to triplets, somebody is going to listen. When she stands and gives her testimony, when a woman who's been told that both her ovaries are no longer functional, conceives, 
somebody is going to ask a question. When a man who's been a failure all of his life receives wisdom from God and starts a business that makes no sense and begins to multiply in abundance and begins to sponsor the kingdom, somebody is going to ask him, you were a failure. You've always been a failure. What happened? You will tell him it is a manifestation of the word of God. It is a birthing of the word of God. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there? Are we there? Gale, 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 gale. It's my pleasure. joy to welcome you to 2016 our year of the manifested world person 
who is going to experience multiple <laughs> God say, I'm doing a quick work. I'm doing a quick work. Things are breaking up already. Things are breaking down already. Things are building up already. Things are taking shape and taking form already. Things are melting away already. Manifestations in your body, manifestations in your business, manifestations in your marriage, manifestations in your personality, manifestations in your ministry. And this shall be in these last days as a sign. This shall be in these last days as a wonder. This shall be in these last days as a display of my power. So the lost will hear and the lost will see. Just like there were wonders in Goshen, you will be set apart. Everything that concerns you will be different says the Spirit of God this is the year of the manifested word give a shout of praise give a shout of praise give a shout of praise We see him, we see him, and it's now. We see him and he's near, we can touch him. We see him and we know. We see him and we behold his glory. We speak, and what we speak becomes the determining factor of our experience. We manifest your word. What we speak, what we believe, you will confirm. You will attest to what we speak, what we believe, what we declare, even in the face of scorn, in the face of shame in the face of impossibilities, the anointing and the grace upon this year, the anointing and the grace upon this year of the manifested word will bring to birth quickly that which we have seen, that which we have spoken, that which we have declared. This is indeed the year of the manifested word. Lift your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated for a moment. With every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. The way to begin this new year is by making Jesus Christ Savior and Lord of your life. By making him Savior and making him Lord of your life. If you're in this tent or you're in the overflow, you're in the teen church tent, anywhere, anywhere around the sound of my voice, you've not made Jesus Christ Savior and Lord of your life. And you'd like to do that right now. Can I see your hand up? Can I see your hand up? So I, I'll pray with you. I'll pray with you. That's the way. That's the first step to take 
in order to enjoy the fulfillment of this word, to see the manifestation of the word. If you're here, you're not born again, you do not know Jesus. Ushers, please help me. Can I see your hand go up so I can see you and pray for you? Is there anybody who wants to make Jesus Christ Savior and Lord of your life? They point me to a hand. If your hand is up, yeah, God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? Somebody else wants to join this man to make Jesus Savior and Lord of your life. What a great way to start the brand new year. All around the tent here in the overflow. Ushers, can you check the overflow? Can you check the teen church, please? If there's anybody who wants to make Jesus Christ Savior and Lord of their life. Blessed be his name. Is there anybody else? Are you pointing me to another hand? If you died today, of course, nobody expects that this time. But you want to have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Are you pointing me to another hand? The other people coming. God bless you. God bless you as you come. If your hand is up, could you just take your Bible, take your bag, take everything you came to church with and come and meet me right here in the front. God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. If God is dealing with your heart, just respond. Just respond. If he's dealing with your heart, if you're sensing a tugging in your heart and uneasiness, just respond. That's all. That's God talking to you. You need to be here, so be here. The other people in the overflow, are they coming? God bless you, my brother. Are they coming? Nobody else. Can you lift your two hands up in surrender to Jesus? That's good. Lift your two hands up in surrender to him. Say these words after me. Say, oh God, my father, I come to you today in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus died for my sins and you raised him from the dead. You raised him from the dead for my salvation. Jesus, save me now. I make you my Lord and my personal Savior. Thank you, Father, for saving me. I'm now born again in Jesus' name. I'll pray for you. Father, I pray for him as I lay my hands on him. I declare that he'll not only prosper, he will flourish. Thank you, Father, for this is the year of the manifested word for him. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can you stand up? Can you turn around? Can we receive him into the family of God? A brand new soul into the kingdom on this first day of the year. Can we rejoice? Somebody will talk with him and he'll come back. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Some of us are sitting here and we're asking ourselves, do I have enough faith? Do I have enough faith? Well, I wake up and it's December 2016 and there have been no manifestations in my life. God says, you don't need a lot of faith. You just need a step of faith. You need a step of faith today and a step of faith tomorrow. You need a step of faith in the face of your inabilities. You need a step of faith in the face of impossibilities. You need a step of faith. That's all you need. That's all you need. That's all you need. A step of faith according to my word, which is all you need. For my word is eager. My word does not expire. My word does not tire of being confessed. My word does not tire of being preached. My word does not tire of being spoken. My word is loaded with power within itself to bring to pass every manifestation planned for your life. So step out in joy. Step out in faith. Step out expectant. Step out in courage. Step out as an evangelist in these last days. Determine that your life will be a sign, a wonder, an expression of the dunamis power of God. For my dunamis has never failed you. Look back and see what my dunamis has done in your life. Look back and see the expressions of my power 
Even the fact that you are seated here today is an expression of my dunamis. So don't step into this year with fear. Don't step in with questions. Step in expectant. Step in courageous. Step in full of anticipation and expectation. For the anointing is present to back my word. The anointing is present to back the prophetic declaration of this year. This is your year of the manifested word. Manifestations will occur. They will occur in the places you expect them. And they will yet occur in the places you don't even expect them. They will occur in places you have believed for. And they will occur in places you have given up on. They will occur because I do a quick work. I do a quick work. I am raising up signs and wonders and miracles in your midst. I'm raising you up signs and wonders and miracles. For my heartbeat is for the lost. My heartbeat is for the souls that are perishing. My heartbeat is to rake more men into the kingdom. And as you rise up as a sign and a wonder and a miracle, many will be drawn unto me. Many will be drawn unto the kingdom. Many will be drawn unto my word. And they too will become manifestations of my living word. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. When you hear that the lame will walk, don't take yourself out of the equation. When you hear that the blind will see, don't wait to hear that somebody else did it. When you hear that the impossible became possible, don't sit in your seat and imagine the day you will hear it happen for someone else. No, you are the one I'm relying on. You are the one I have anointed. You are the one I have equipped with my supernatural grace. You are the one that I have lifted for this purpose. For it has always been my desire that my word is manifested, made clear, made clear, made clear, made clear, moved from the realm of faith till the fullness of your faith gives birth to tangibility. That has always been my heart desire and that will be your experience this new year. Lift your hands and glorify him. Glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. 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 Courage. 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 Courage is all you need. Courage. 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 Boldness. Courage. To speak. Even in the face of the lion. Courage. To speak. Even in the furry furnace. Courage. To declare my word. Even in the face of shame and scorn. Courage. To maintain your confession regardless of what you see courage to stand firm to stand firm with my word that existed before the beginning courage and as you do that my word will be manifested I guarantee it says God I guarantee it says God I guarantee it says God lift your hands and worship him worship him glory be to God 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 before we take our offering and have a short time of praise and go outside for the video and the fireworks and all of that we want to just stretch forth our hands to you. And we declare that you are blessed. 
It's our honor, it's our joy as your pastors to bless you this new year. We bless you this new year. We bless you this new year. You are empowered to prosper. You are empowered by the anointing that breaks every yoke. You have courage. You have the strength you need. And this year, we declare it. We enforce it. This year will be your year of the manifested word. In this year, the manifestations will cause you to wonder. They will cause the onlooker in the body of Christ to wonder. They will cause the unbeliever to wonder and to be drawn to you. For you will be as light in the midst of darkness. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. The blessing is upon you. The blessing is upon your household. God's protection will never depart from you. God's peace will be your increasing experience. God's provision and prosperity will be your experience. We bless you. Purpose you will discover. Purpose you will fulfill. Purpose you will run with. You will walk in the path of God and in the path of this word this year and beyond. For the blessing is active upon you. The blessing is active upon your family. The blessing is active upon all that concerns you. Many will be drawn to the kingdom because of you. Today we call you a sign. We call you a wonder. Today we declare that not only are you a sign and a wonder, you are proof of the dunamis of God. And we declare that according to God's promise, his word in your mouth and in your heart will be manifested and made clear for all to see. Lift your hands and receive it. Glory be to God. Glory be to God.